verses 10 through 23. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, all at the entrances of their tents. Then the Lord became very angry, and Moses was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you treated your servant so badly? Why have I not found favor in your sight that you lay the burden of all this people on me? Did I conceive all these people? Did I give birth to them that you should say to me, carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a suckling child to the land that you promised on oath to their ancestries, ancestors? Where am I to get meat to give all these people? For they come weeping to me and say, give us meat to eat. I'm not able to carry all these people alone for they are too heavy for me. If this is the way you are going to treat me, put me to death at once. If I have found favor in your sight, and do not let me see myself in misery. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me seventy of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tent of meeting, and have them take their place there among you. I will come down and talk with you there, and I will take some of the spirit that is on you and put it on them. And they shall bear the burden of the people along with you, so that you will not bear it all by yourself. And say to the people, Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow you shall eat meat. For you have wailed in the hearing of the Lord, saying, If only we had meat, surely it was better for us in Egypt. Therefore the Lord shall give you meat, and you shall eat. You shall not eat one day, or two days, or five days, or ten days, or twenty days, but for a whole month until it comes out of your nostrils and becomes loathsome to you because you have rejected the Lord who is among you and you have wailed before him saying, Why did we ever leave Egypt? But Moses said, The people and I, well, we number 600,000 on the foot. And you say, I will give them meat that they may have meat for a whole month. Are there enough flocks and herds to slaughter for them? Are there enough fish in the sea to catch for them? And the Lord said to Moses, Is the Lord's power limited? Now you shall see whether my word will come true for you or not. May God add a blessing on the reading of his word today. Will you all pray with me, please? Loving God, in this hour and in this place, I ask that you grant to me the gift of preaching. May the meditation of my heart and the words of my mouth bring glory to you, O God, my rock and my redeemer. And to the beloved who are gathered in your house today, I ask that you grant to them the gift of hearing. May our time together be one in which we grow to understand these words and apply them to our lives as we continue to give ourselves to your service. In Jesus' name. Amen. If I use the term a planned community, how many of you understand what I'm talking about? A few. Okay. For the rest of you, a planned community is basically when some engineers, civil engineers, and some city planners sit down and figure out how a town or a community should be laid out. Now, living here in Michigan, you know, we have this thing called the suburban sprawl. And there are some areas that you drive through where all the streets are kind of intersected on straight lines. And there are things that are uh, strategically placed that are easy to get to for the homeowners. Then you have places like here in Waterford, because of all the lakes, you're lucky to find a straight road for more than half a mile. A planned community is set up on what the Romans called the Hippodamian model, which is a grid pattern. Um, And things were designed where things would be walking distance from where the people lived. Now, where I live in Royal Oak, if you're in the older part of the downtown area, that would have been a planned community. When my father was growing up in Royal Oak, he remembers walking to the downtown area with his mother to go shopping. There were five grocery stores at the time. 
There were shops that specialized in this and specialized in that. And he would go there with his mother. They would order the stuff, purchase it, and it would be on their back porch by the time they got home later in the afternoon. That is how a planned community worked. But that's after they were established. That's after they were built up. What's going on with the Israelites right now is they're still coming out of the growing pains of being an enslaved people. And we as westernized Americans have a really hard time understanding this concept because we have never had to live a life where we had no say in what we do. We might have a say, but we won't get our way. And that is the very essence of what we call democracy. But we can voice something. We can protest. We can say we don't like it. And if we have what we would consider a wise and mature person above us or who we're appealing to, they would say, let's open a dialogue. Let's chat about this. The Israelites did not have that. It was do or given something worse to do. And if you didn't do that, you were put to death. That's simple. So to be able to think for oneself, to be able to get up and go from point A to point B, you know, they didn't do that. They worked, they were provided for, they went home. That was it. They are now in the wilderness, a number of years after being at the foot of Sinai, where they started out. They are now wandering through the region called the Kadesh. And this is where they did the majority of their wandering. And... They are at the place where they're feeling the pangs, the pains of becoming a community that has to think and work for their daily bread. They're at the place where they're starting 